Well, hey everybody, it is February 13th, and I want to welcome you to Living Power, your online Bible study where we are walking through the Bible in a year. It is great to see you today. I'm so looking forward to walking through the Bible with you. And if you are just joining us, I want to welcome you to the study and tell you how excited I am that you are here. And if you've been with me from the beginning, Welcome. We started January 1. We're going to go all the way to December 31st. Thank you so much for telling your friends about us because we continue to grow and people are subscribing to the Bible study each and every day. So it is so excited, exciting to see what God is doing through this Bible study. <clears throat> Today's lesson is entitled, Hammering to Perfection. And the verse that I've chosen comes from Exodus 39, verse 8. Bez Bezalel made the lampstand of pure hammered gold from one piece. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about the lampstand. And let's just spend today marveling at the intricacies of these pieces of furniture and what skill the Holy Spirit gave to these men to be able to create these beautiful works of art. One thing to note about the reading today, you know, we're, we're looking at the pieces of furniture and you may have realized that you had read this before. You have. This is a repeat. And you might wonder, well, why in the world did God put this in here as a repeat? Well, if he put it in the Bible, if he put it in his word, there is a good reason for it. I can't tell you specifically, without a doubt, this is the reason, but I can give you a couple of possibilities. First, whenever we see something repeated in Scripture, we know it is critically important. And I think what's important here to realize is that God gave instructions and the people completely to the letter fulfilled them. They carried them out. Remember this book was written as were the first five books were believed to be written by Moses. The, um, the writings were written for Israel originally and perhaps they needed to see that God's commands were carried out perfectly to the letter. And it's interesting to see the blessing that comes as a result of their obedience. So here is one time in Israel's life where they were completely obedient to the Lord, following God's instructions. And look, look what happens when we partner with God and follow his commands. He is always with us. He is always providing. He is always equipping. Let's look at some of the amazing pieces that um, came out of their work as they worked together. Now, to make the tabernacle and all of the furnishings, one ton of gold was used, three and a quarter tons of silver, and two and a quarter tons of bronze. This was an expensive structure. And I find it interesting that it was built both on the redemptive price paid through the silver. Remember, that was something that the people had to bring. But it was also... Um, built with voluntary giving. The gold was voluntary. And that reminds me, you know, God was so willing voluntarily to give his only son to die for us. Jesus was willing to give his life, but yet a redemptive price, a price had to be paid. We were not cheap. It cost God an awful lot to redeem us so that we could come back into fellowship with him. Now, if God asked you to make an ark, and to make a cover of one piece with two cherubim, would you be able to do it? I certainly would not be able to do it. I would require the gifts of the Holy Spirit just as I cannot lead this Bible study in my own power. It is due to an infilling of the Holy Spirit who reveals things to me in Scripture and gives me resources and study materials and the time and everything that is needed to put into a Bible study he gives to me. So I give God the credit for this Bible study as Bezalel gave God the credit for his amazing abilities to create the, these wonderful things. The lampstand. Let's talk about the lampstand. This thing weighed a lot. It was hammered out of 75 pounds of pure gold. That is amazing. And when I read that word hammered, it just reminds me, you know, sometimes I feel hammered. Sometimes I feel like life is hammering at me, beating me up, and some days are just really difficult. I don't know if you feel the same way, but you probably do. You've probably gone through periods in your life where you just feel like you're a piece 
of metal that is just being hammered out. Well, I want to remind you today of a saying that someone told me Sunday in a Bible study class that I was a member of, that God will not protect you from the things that will perfect you. And if we can just embrace sometimes the trials that come in our life and realize that of a massive piece of gold, Bezalel was able to hammer out and create this beautiful lampstand, this beautiful menorah with almond buds and flowers and blossoms. It was one piece, the base and the, the stand and the, um, the, the seven pieces. And here, let me tell you exactly. The base, the shaft, and the branches these three parts, but yet we're made of one piece. And how sometimes life, it feels like life is hammering at us. But if we work with God and embrace what it is he is trying to teach us through the trial uh, and, the, and, and life's difficulty, he will create something beautiful as this menorah was something beautiful. Romans 8.28 tells us that God is working all things for our good because we are called according to his purpose and he is doing a mighty work in each one of our life of that we can be sure this lampstand was placed inside the um, the holy place so there was a curtain around this room and it was the only light in this room there was no other light in this room at all it was on the south side of the tabernacle giving light to the table where the bread of the presence was and it was giving light shining light on the the bread of life and that just reminds me you know the holy spirit illumines and gives us light gives us revelation anytime we understand anything in the bible it is because the holy spirit has made it so so the holy spirit another ministry of the holy spirit is to point people to christ and jesus is the bread of life and here we have a picture of light shining on the bread as the holy spirit shines light on jesus in our own life and leads people to him this menorah is a very common Hebrew symbol. It's one of the most common symbols in Judaism today. And the, the six branches, three on one side, three on the other side, and it had a center shaft, ended up in a cup at the very, very top. And that cup was made in the form of an open almond flower and there were beautiful flowers almond flowers in this in this thing all around the decoration was so exquisite that God only commanded um, the most highly skilled craftsmen to make it no measurements were given for its exact size one of the commentaries that I read said who can measure the light of God and the seven oil lamps were to never ever go out. The priests lit them in the morning, attended to them in the evening, and the light was to shine continually as the light of the Holy Spirit in our life is supposed to shine continually. Now you might wonder about the almond. Why the almond flower? Well, I knew you were going to ask me that, and I have with me an almond. Don't you love these little guys? Almonds love to eat these. So we're going to look at almonds today and see why, why was the almond used. Well, the almond in Hebrew means the awakening one because the almond tree is the first tree once winter is over. It's at the cusp of spring, the first tree to awake from sleep and to actually blossom. So this speaks of the speedy and powerful result of light. And it just reminds me today of how we are to let the light of God shine in our life. And we are to let our lamps burn continuously, never putting them out. Because we are the light of the world. And the world is looking to us to point them in the direction of Christ. And that is a ministry that we have today and every day is to point people to Christ. So, are, is your lamp burning? 
Are your wicks trimmed? How are you doing in living a life worthy of the Lord and the ministry that you have been called to do and to point others to Christ? Let's be reminded today that when life hammers us out and when it feels like we are beaten and bruised, that we are being turned into something beautiful, this beautiful menorah that buds and blooms and that gives light to the rest of the world. So I hope this lesson has been a blessing to you today. I hope you will stay with me as we continue in and we begin to start the book of Numbers in the next couple of days. You won't want to miss tomorrow. Tomorrow is our last day in Exodus, so I can't wait to see you. Please join me, plan to join me again tomorrow, for there is something exciting here to be seen at the very end of Exodus. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks so much for joining me. Blessings. See you tomorrow.